slash no sleep. Posted by you slash G underscore A93. In Mr. Hofsetter's carnival you must follow these rules to ride. Part 1. Come one, come all. To Mr. Hofsetter's candy carnival. Enjoy hot food and cold drinks. Rides, games and mazes. The largest non-commercial roller coaster you've ever seen and much much more. Oh, and of course, we can't forget the candy. One night only special event. See you there. Uck I can't stand clowns Russell said while shoving another handful of Pringles in his face. Me and Darla snickered at him and teased him a little. We only meant good fun. Russ was a bit of a chicken about everything to be honest, but he was our pal. It was odd, a carnival and no announcement on the town hall board? Mrs. Newbury is slipping in her old age. I get you Russ. But it still looks fun. Anything's more fun than hanging down here in your mom's basement all summer, Darla said half serious. That was us. A merry group of angsty teenagers trying to survive the boring summer of 88. You know most of our friends went on some vacation with their families. Disneyland New York, Paris. Shit, anywhere else was better than Onksville. Nothing but a small town running the same shitty movies at the $1 theater. The only time that place saw any action is when they would release a new Arnie flick. Same arcade with games that Mr. Johansson refuses to update. Same same same. Nothing really happens. Nothing really changes. So when the prospect of a sugar-inducing carnival attraction sprawled up on the screen, I really couldn't disagree with Darla about the excitement. What do you think Frank, should we go? Darla asked me. Candy, rides, something not boring. Hell yeah. That was that. Even chicken shit Russ decided a good clown scare was better than missing out on the only fun thing to happen to Onksville in the last 15 years. It was settled. I threw on my best jeans and t-shirt and headed out to meet the gang out near the high school. I should have sensed the danger from the beginning of the commercial. Who advertises a commercial the day of the event? Even more, who holds any events near the old Johansson's farmhouse? That place was way out on the edge of town. I, an inexperienced teen at the time, could have picked 20 better locations to hold a social gathering. But, we pedaled our asses off towards the old farmhouse. We were met halfway there by glowing lights and the sound of festivities. The lights and sounds manifested into rides and booths. The mouth-watering smell of corn dogs and funnel cake filling our noses. Soon we were staring down the entrance of the greatest light show I had ever seen. Whoa we all said in amazement. We locked up our bikes. And headed towards the entrance. To our surprise, there was no one at a ticket booth. As a matter of fact, there wasn't anyone there. Everything was on, all the food was prepped but, not a soul in sight. Come on guys this is giving me the willies, Russ said nervously. I couldn't have agreed more. Oh please, the first time something interesting happens in this town and you want run away? Let's at least explore a little. Darla piped up. Being the only girl in our group she definitely held some control over how cool we wanted to be perceived. I sheepishly joined her, yeah, Simon Russ. Let's give it a shot I said. God what a tool I was. We decided to make our way inside since there was no one there to take our entrance fee. The experience was incredible. The lights and sounds like a sensory overload to our small town brains. We figured we would start out small, something we could really mess up. We opted for the house of mirrors. That's where we met, him. We erupted in laughter. All of us looking distorted in some way in the seemingly infinite mirrors. For a moment we were just a couple of teens enjoying life. Even Russ. I nearly fell out laughing when he ran smack into a mirror. Thinking it was a hall. Then, then things got really serious. Oh man Russ you need to be careful you could really make an ass of yours, I said before slamming into a mirror of my own. I sat on the floor holding my nose. Fuck. I thinking I might have broke my nose. I muttered. Blood running down my face and onto my white t-shirt. Jesus Frankie, be careful Darla said, reaching out to help me up. That is until she couldn't press it any more forward. Like a glass was preventing her. Hey? What's going on here? She yelled. Guys? I don't feel so good about this Russ complained. Just then, a man dressed like a carnival barker entered into the reflection of some of the mirrors. I recognized his voice, immediately. Oh well look at what we have here. A couple of lovely children. Welcome. To my carnival. Mr. Mr. Hofsetter? The carnival owner? You are sharp Frankie boy. You are sharp. Now let's get down to IT shall we? Hey asshole what the hell's going on? I can't move but in a damn square. What kind of joke is this? Darla roared from her end of this reflective prison. Oh Darla, such a temper. Allow me. He waved his hand and suddenly, Darla could no longer be heard. 
Ah ISNT that better? Now, allow me to explain what indeed is going on here. You are now my humble, guests, he said with a snicker, here to enjoy and survive my beloved carnival. Survive? Russell repeated. A noticeable shaking in his voice. Yes my son. Survive. For you see, my carnival has no fees, no need for, mortal rewards like money or material things. No, we play for souls here my dear friends. And when you walk through those gates, you signed your souls into my consignment. I could see the tears welling up in Russ's eyes. Anger flowing through Darla's face. And a mixture of dread and horror mixing in the pit of my stomach. It wasn't just the things he was saying. It was his cadence. His look. Decked out in all that pinstripe bullshit and with his face messily covered in poor clown makeup. Underneath I could see scars and burns. Teeth, yellow and rotted. The hair under his hat was obviously thinned out and gray. He looked to be less human every second that passed. Now my children, the rules here aren't hard. As a matter of fact, they're going to be the only thing that make any sense, he laughed. The queen of the carnival is in dire need of her loving teddy bear. He is white with dark black eyes. An adorable button nose. And inside his ear, is the name Maribel. Stitched in red thread. When you find him, bring him to the castle burger area. And recover your reward. But be careful not to break any rules, or you might find yourself in quite a bit of trouble. He then listed the rules as follows. Never trust a clown for the correct advice unless his name is Lenny. Lenny's the only trustworthy goof of the bunch. There's a lost little girl looking for her parents, if she asks for your help run away until she leaves you alone. She hasn't eaten and you look mighty appetizing. Don't mind the mimes, they're only here to clean up the messes, unless of course they approach you to entertain, then buckle up and enjoy. Show no emotion to these clown wannabes, unless you want to find out how real their art can be. The only way you'll find that bear is if you can manage to beat an employee's booth of bottle toss. But be warned, if the employee hands you the ball with his left hand, you've already lost. Insist he gives you the ball with his right. He'll eventually give in and then it's on you to knock down the cans. Never stick around where the stilt walkers are. They have their noses in the air and would crush you without a second glance. Above all, be nice to the bearded woman. She is the most dangerous player in this game. With that, Mr. Hofsetter wishes us good luck and disappeared from sight. The entire room shattered. And when the noise stopped and we uncovered our eyes, we were back outside in front of the house of mirrors. We all gasped in a heavy heap of air. Russ was hysterical. Darla holding her throat. Little by little uttering out words. I was in a bit of a daze. What the hell was that? I stated. We stood up, the once beautiful carnival was now decrepit. Ripped tents. Rusting rides. It was unbelievable. Just as we were going to hightail it out of there, we heard a faint, call. Yoo-hoo. Called a shadowy figure from the dark. Who's there? Show yourself, Darla demanded. Out came an enormous clown. He wore a yellow suit with white polka dots. Big blue bow tie and a sinister grin painted on his face. He, like Mr. Hofsetter, was very hardened looking. Scars running across his face. I could hear Russ quivering. I hear you're looking for a bear kid, I could help, for a price, he said in a soft but deep tone. We all looked at each other. Unsure of what to do. Moon. Follow me. I'll show you where that brat's toy is at, he said with a laugh. I gotta admit I almost followed him until Darla spoke up. Hey Lenny, should we trust this guy? Trust me? The clown said why of course. Lenny, tell her you can totally trust me. The clown said, looking at both me and Russ. We all knew exactly what happened. Darla screamed out run, as she spun around, nearly mowing the grass in her path with her speed. Me and Russ followed closely behind. I looked behind me to see the clown staring at us. Not moving. I stopped and turned around to see his shadowy self return to the darkness, almost as if he was melting into the darkness. We ran around the ferris wheel to regroup. Oh my god, we need to get out of here, I knew this was a bad idea. Shit. Guys let's go. Russell breath. For fuck's sake you're a mess, Darla yelled. Look, I'd quit the hell's going on. But we're obviously playing by their rules. I don't exactly see them letting us run out of here and riding home. We have one job, to find that spoiled bitch's bear. We have the rules. They obviously weren't bullshitting about that. Darla was such a leader, in a time where women weren't given the credit to hack it with the guys, she excelled past most boys our age. She was a woman beyond her time. So brave and courageous. I am a bit embarrassed to say at the time, she was definitely tougher than me. Had bigger balls, metaphorically speaking. She's right, 
I said, we need to get through this, together. You and Russ? No. I'm not. Fuck this. I should have stayed home. Russ turned to run away but ran into a woman and they both collapsed on the floor. Oh. I'm sorry son. Please let me help you up, she said sweetly. Get the fuck off me you creep. I need to get out of here. Russ screamed. It was then that we realized his grave mistake. The woman stood up straight. Face now illuminated by the haunting full moon. Here eyes a deep hazel color. Fists clenched. The woman now staring Russ deep into his soul with a hateful look. A look so vastly scary, Satan himself would have a chill running down his spine, all while stroking her beard. Without another thought, she grabbed Russell's arms, put her boot on his chest and ripped both arms off his body. The scream Russ let out still chills me to this day. Something between a banshee and a scared child. Blood poured out of Russ now armless torso. After running in circles in panic, Russ fell to the ground, bleeding profusely. Darla and myself couldn't react. Paralyzed by the pure trauma in front of us. The bearded woman turned to us, arms still in hand. I'm sorry younglings, I do try to make an effort to be more courteous but I must say a child with no manners is infuriating. Please, make sure you mind your manners in this carnival. The woman then threw the arms in front of Russell's body and casually walked into the darkness. A pack of mimes came by pretending to stuff Russ into a cramped ambulance before taking his body off to God knows where. When I received feeling back in my body, I screamed bloody murder. Darla, though more poised, dropped to her knees with silent sobs. We had no time to console one another as we watched from one of the decrepit tents enormously tall creatures came walking out. It was the stilt walkers. In Mr. Hofsetter's carnival you must follow these rules to ride. Part 2. The stilt walkers were grotesque. Imagine if you will, grey-skinned human bodies. Fully dressed in a musty tuxedo. The heads poking from the top of the shirts were impaled by what I could only assume were part of the stilts. And though their eyes were moving and chests were filling with oxygen, but we could see no life within them. The undead, marching carelessly through the area. Jagged pieces of wood and metal sticking out from the bottoms of their stilts, slashing anyone who would dare be in their way. We had enough distance between us and the walkers to think of where to go from here. The Ferris wheel was our only source of cover. This was a dangerous situation to be in. Where do we go? Did the rules say anything about shelter? Fuck, Darla said. Seeming a little bit more hopeless than before. That man said, never stick around where the stilt walkers were. We need to just clear the area. Darla paused before turning over to me. Eyes red and puffy. Tears still streaming down her cheeks. What about Russ? In all the dreadful excitement, I had put the image of Russ's dismembered body out of my mind. The thought of his screams playing over and over. It was maddening. I felt as if I was in a looping dream. Chest to boot. The sound of flesh ripping. The screams. The horror. I was staring at Darla, her lips moving but unable to hear her. Only hearing the looping horror that was Russell's demise. Look out I finally heard, as Darla shoved me with all her strength. Just then, a stilt walker jammed his enormous stilt down right where I was standing. It managed to cut my arm just a bit before I was completely out of the way. I got to my feet as fast as I could. Me and Darla began running to the other side of the carnival. In here, I yelled. Running into a small tent. Once inside I held Darla. Then checked her to see if she was alright. I'm fine, she demanded. The tent was, dark. We looked for something to look around with but came zero up with nothing. We peeked outside to see if the walkers were still out. They were. Just strolling carelessly. Every once in a while we would hear the crunching of bones and flesh as they stomped around. We assumed it was an employee of the park or worse, another innocent soul. Just as we were going to pull the tent covers open to do another check, a mime appeared, standing right in front of the tent. An enormous grin plastered on its face. I was behind Darla so I assume it didn't hear my cowardly wince as it began coming into the tent. Darla looked back at me, stone-faced. Don't, show, emotion, she whispered. We fell back into the tent. Watching this, mime, perform all its standard gimmicks. The wind blowing his umbrella back. Pulling himself over on a rope. And yes, even the I'm stuck in a glass box shtick. For a moment, we even forgot about the horrors of the park and began clapping after every trick. Staying totally emotionless throughout. He began to wind down as his show was coming to an end. He finished pulling out his last batch of tricks when he looked at me. Eyes cold. Smile, now looking more sinister than ever. He pointed his fingers into a gun-like position. He pointed it at his temple. Then to the top of the ceiling. Then he seemed to dance around like a cowboy celebrating a victory in the old west. 
And then, he pointed his fingers towards me. But something was very, off about the way he approached me. It was, horrifying. His makeup began to melt off his face. His eyes lost the white in them. Yes, he was becoming more like a creature you'd find in this horrible place. As he stepped closer and closer my heart rate jumped. He seemed to be cackling like he was at a comedy show but no laughs came out. Not one sound. He stuck the gun right in the middle of my forehead. He cocked his thumb, as to indicate that he was ready to pull the trigger. It was the most intense moment of my life up until then. The mime looked into my emotionless eyes and then, smiled. He pulled the fingers back away. Pretending to shoot everything in the room to no avail. He stuck his fingers in his mouth and that's when I heard it. Darla gasped in horror and in an instant, a shot rang out from within the mime's mouth. Blowing an enormous hole into the back of its head. I don't think he'll be doing any more shows tonight Darla said. I couldn't believe it. She must have been waiting for the right moment but, it was amazing. She had adapted to their rules. Even beating them at their own game. We cleared out of the tent. I was still a bit shaken at the last encounter but at least the stilt walkers had cleared out. At this point we were lost. Where do we go? Who do we see? Where the fuck is this damn bear? It was all a bit too much tbh. I nearly fainted at the million questions running through my brain. Until I heard. PSSS, come here. A voice called unto us. Another clown. This one more bright and colorful. He almost looked like he actually belonged in a normal setting. As normal as a carnival can be. No, we're not doing this again. Fuck off. Darla screamed as she turned to me grabbing my hand. We were about to sprint back towards the Ferris wheel when we saw them. All of them. Clowns. Coming out of every corner of darkness. What's the matter kids? One of them said, are you scared of little old me? He finished giggling maniacally. Is it the nose? Howled another. Round and round there was nothing but colors. Bow ties and neckties. Polka dots and stripes. Big red noses and shoes as long as a yardstick. And of course laughing. So much fucking laughing. What are you afraid of? What are you afraid of? What are you afraid of? The clowns chanted. Is it snakes? One said, as he melted into shadow before the shadow dissipated into one hundreds of slithering snakes. How about zombies? Ha 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 ha. The clown laughed heartily. Belly jiggling from every giggle until slabs of meat fell off him. Skin ripping from his face exposing his skull and innards. Still laughing as he walked towards us. Now sounding more guttural. I felt like crying. Looking over at Darla, she seemed to share that sentiment. Just then I noticed a clown off to the left of the tent we just left. There was something about his demeanor. He was calm. As a matter of fact, he was taking drags on a cigarette and looking at his watch. Not a care in the world. Almost as if he was bored with his life at Mr. Hofsetter's carnival. I grabbed Darla by the arm and dragged her over to him. Nearly escaping the all too zombified clown. Lenny, I shouted. The clown looked up from his cigarette. Almost surprised to see me talking to him by name. Still he kept his cool demeanor. What the hell do you want, kid? He said, looking back at his watch and taking another drag. His voice was like that of a mob boss in the Colombo crime family. We were hoping, well, we were, uh. I fumbled. Not realizing the anger on this clown's face. What what? What is it? Lenny bellowed out ferociously. His face looking almost cartoonish and how wide and evil looking it turned as he scolded my poor excuse for a conversation. We need help, these clowns, this carnival please. We just want to get home, Darla yelled. A single tear running down her face before she slipped it off with her finger. Lenny looked at us with anger, then pity. What clowns kid? He said calmly as he ashed his cig. When we looked back behind, they were all gone. All of them. Almost as if the clown shoved off into a mini bug and headed for Hothefa Caressville. We both stood there in the stunned silence of the warm summer night. Kid, you got a lot of shit to get through still. I'll tell you what these clowns are a bunch of pussies here. Scared of a little fire, you well I'll tell you, these clowns are not performers at all, see? All a bunch of punks who gave up an illustrious clowny career to be, shadow, ah, monsters, yeah that's it shadow monsters. They ain't Newton kid. Just flash a light and they should shit their costume. Lenny stood tall now, adjusting his hair and bow. Good luck kid, ain't a lot of people who make it but you seem resourceful. I'm sure you'll be just fine, he said in the nicest tone, before he essentially moved us aside, besides, clowns and such ain't gonna do Newton to nobody. They're full of shit. Now that one he pointed behind us that one there, yeesh, good luck he said as he dissipated into the carnival attractions. I don't know how to describe it, 
but it wasn't like when the shadow clowns melt into the darkness he'd just become one with the carnival tent. That's when we heard her. Please. I'm lost, can you help me find my mommy and daddy? In Mr. Hofsetter's carnival, you must follow these rules to ride. Finale. As we turned around and looked we saw a figure enshrouded by the shadows. When it came closer, we saw a little girl. She was in a periwinkle dress and had platinum blonde hair. Ice cold blue eyes. And a look on her face that gave every puppy on earth a ride for their money. She was the most perfect child I had ever seen. Please help me, I'm lost I need help she cried. At this point in the story I am assuming you expected Darla to direct us out of harm's way huh? Grabbing my hand and pulling me to safety. Unfortunately, that is not what happened. We both stared at this little girl. Hanging on her every word as she came closer and closer. I finally broke her trance after replaying the rules in my head. Darla. I screamed as I pulled her arm to follow me but, she broke her arm away from my grip. Darla? I said. Trying to find my friend in the dark caverns that were now her eyes. She didn't move. Didn't speak. Just stood there looking at me. The little girl then directed her gaze at me. Please, don't be mean. I'm lost, don't you get it? Won't you help me? She said once again. This time her voice was melding into something demonic. Then the little girl began to morph into something, horrific. It started with her neck cracking to unusual angle. It was not humanly possible for it to twist and distort like that. I knew that much. Her eyes began to roll into the back of her head and large chunks of flesh started to burn off of her face. The once stunning blonde hair now falling out rapidly. Leaving large patches of empty space. Only covered in welts and scars. She began laughing like a patient at the insanity ward. Ha 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 she cackled. Her laugh was so inhumane, I felt like I could have categorized it as a sound from Lucifer in the Old Testament. As she continued to laugh her jaw widened. Almost like it unhinged. Exposing rows and rows of horribly jagged teeth. All this time Darla stood there watching me. I tried and begged for her to run. I tried grabbing her but to no avail. She was no longer Darla. She was, a part of the carnival. The now grotesque creature seemed to have finished its transformation, as it began walking closer to me and Darla. Snarling and laughing with a sinister look on its face. I still rolled back into her skull. Please. Darla. We gotta go please. Please please the monster mocked. Inching closer to us every second. It was then I made the hardest decision I have ever made in my young life. I began to run. I ran and ran until I knew I had put some distance between me and that, thing. When I took a moment to look back, I saw the monster open its mouth fully. It had to have been three feet wide. Teeth all pointing at Darla. I turned away and continued running. I must have ran to the other side of the carnival before hitting the fence and collapsing to the ground. I cried. I cried for my friends. I cried for the decision we made to come here. I cried that things were so scary. I just cried. I was terrified. I'm man enough to admit it. What I never told anyone, until this post, was that I didn't want to die at the hands of that fucking carnival. I wouldn't let them do it, so I made my way on top of a tall ride. As I climbed up, I felt streams of tears falling back down to earth. As I looked down below I saw some stilt walkers doing their rounds. I was there at the tip top of the ride. My breath was shaky. Tears were running quicker down my cheeks. I took one more look out to that cursed carnival, closed my eyes and, let go. The fall was slow, yet somehow quick. The first half felt like a series of my life, flashing before my eyes. Every argument I had with my friends and family, every hug, every smile. The second half just felt like I hit the fast forward button as I slammed head first onto a dirt patch and the lights went out. Now, I don't know the way it works, whether I died or not. But almost instantly, I became conscious. Now staring at the ride I climbed up. I was dumbfounded. I know what I had just done. I felt every raw emotion one could feel as they tried killing themselves. What the hell went wrong? You that low huh kid? A familiar voice rang out to me. Lenny? I quivered out. Lenny the clown was standing as he always did. Cool calm and collected. You know, he said, lighting a cigarette in his mouth, this place wasn't all ghouls, monsters and bullshit kid. We were a carnival at one point. Full of fun and laughter. Kids running up and down the tent areas. Families eating and drinking together. Enjoying one another. Lenny took a long drag of his cigarette. And then, some bearded broad came running through town. We'd already had that act come and go. Never did well. We were a carnival. Entertaining, not a freak show. She showed up one day, making demands that old man Hoff hire her, make some sort of changes. 
I'd kid I didn't get into the politics. He of course said no and. We all suffered the consequences. Consequences? I asked. Intrigued. Yeah kid, she came back the next day around closing time. Only this time she looked far more ugly. Demonic even. As we tried to file out of the area, we noticed none of us could leave. It was like an invisible barrier was keeping us in there. We began with complaints and insults but, she put a stop to that real quick. She grabbed a woman from the staff and vomited all over her head. The vial melted away the woman's skin. Then her skull. She waved her hands at the clowns and they became one with the shadows. They could either work for her or drown forever in the blackness. Never to feel anything again but hunger and thirst. Only quenched when they trap other souls into the shadows. I was luckily having a smoke. One by one she tortured us into compliance. Even Hoff. He still gets to be the main attraction but, Hess just as terrified of her as everyone else. But why? Why is she doing this? Why to us? We did nothing to her. We're just kids, I shouted. You want the truth kid? It's because she can. It's because she loves chaos more than anything. You guys were a sharp bunch but you think yous were the first? She's got a long line of missing children posters under her belt kid Lenny said coldly. You gotta play the rules kid. You gotta win, if you wanna see home again. It's too late for me pal. But you. He paused with a slight chuckle you got a chance. Lenny confirmed what was already very apparent. You could not kill yourself out of this hell. You could not escape. Either you're in or you're out. And if you want out. You have got to play their game. Well kid, I'm down to the last puff. I wish you the best, I really do. I hope to never see your face around here again, Lenny said with a half-hearted chuckle. As he walked into a stand and dissipated into it. Just then I heard sounds coming from a tent just behind me. The sign read games and stuff it was the largest tent in the entire carnival. For some reason, I knew this was the stage I had been looking for. That last fucking carny was in there that could help me find that fucking bear. As I stepped into the tent I saw rows and rows of games. Arcade games rusted to hell. Still somehow functioning. There was a dunk tank, where a small boy sat atop the platform shaking. In the water, there looked to be some sort of fish. Piranhas maybe. They had ring toss, balloon popping games and even that fishing game where you pick up a duck and win that prize. But these were no ducks. They were small hands floating by. I winced in fear. Somehow motivating myself to keep walking the aisles looking for the bottle toss man. Every single game was more grotesque than the last. It was absolutely horrible. When I came around to finding the man, he had three balls in a bucket. Looking over at my direction, as if he knew I'd be there right on time. Here to try your luck young man? He hissed from behind his booth. I saw the bottles I had to knock down. The simplest concept in the world. Except there was always a gimmick. Even at a normal carnival, I expected no less here. Could you help me find a white bear? It has the nah. Shh, the man said in a low tone. You want help? You must play, play my games young man. Do it for those who can no longer escape. I looked into this man's eyes. They reminded me of Lenny's, less monstrous than the rest of the bunch around here. You were part of the carnival that got cursed huh? I said, with more confidence. The man looked stunned. But quickly changed his face back to one of calm and simply said, no more questions my boy, now play or leave he hung the bucket of three balls in front of my face. Switch it to the right hand, please I said. Noticing the bucket was in his left hand. He smiled with what seemed like relief. Before switching hand and wishing me good luck. As I stood there looking at the simple three bottle pyramid I felt my guts shift inside of me. Nerves on all eight cylinders. I took the first ball in my hand, I wound up the ball and tossed it right where all three bottles met. Nothing. They didn't budge an inch. The man had a smile spring across his face. Almost a forced one. Looking like a painful emotion. As I picked up the second ball I could see his mouth quivering, as if he knew a hilarious secret causing him to hold a laugh. This time I wound up and put everything I had into hitting the bottom right bottle. Smack! I hit it square in the center of the bottle. And again not even a wiggle. At this point the man was howling laughing. Bent over the table the bottles were on. This laugh was not one of pleasure though. He had sad tears running down his face. I could tell this was of no pleasure to him. Though I was frustrated, I noticed something else as he was bent over laughing. I grabbed my last ball. My last lifeline to getting out of this nightmare. I tried shutting everything off. The arcade noises. The laughing man. Everything. I took a deep breath. I wound up the ball. And, nearly snapping my shoulder tossed that ball right at the legs of the table. 
Within an instant, the table leg shattered causing the whole table to come down. Destroying everything at the top of it, including the bottles. The man stopped laughing abruptly. He looked in my direction with a look of hope. Follow me he hissed out. We walked to the very end of the tent. Where he slid back an old ticket booth and there within that decrepit old time capsule, was that fucking white bear. With that name stitched into its ear. As I took it over to the burger castle area, I couldn't help but feel a terrible survivor's guilt. I had made it this far but lost both of my closest friends. How would I explain this to anyone? To everyone. As I approached the castle restaurant I saw that Mr. Hofsetter was standing there, I felt like rushing him and choking him with my own hands. But something happened. I realized the hate in his eyes wasn't towards me. It was towards the situation. It was the role he could not ignore. Could not escape from. He didn't utter one word to me. He simply pointed to the top of the makeshift stairs and announced coming down as your highness, Princess Maribel. A flurry of clapping erupted from behind me. I turned around in a panic. I would have run if there was anywhere to run to. I was surrounded by all of them. Stilt walkers, mimes, clowns of all colors, even the little girl who was now in her perfect little girl form. As the clapping slowed and eventually stopped I turned back to see her. The bearded lady. She was the princess. Thank you, young man. As she ripped the bear from my hands. The anger building in my viand. With that she ripped the arms from the bear. Then the head. And then, she ordered a mime to come to her. They carried a sack and inside were the arms from Russell, and, Darla's head. With a permanent look of terror on her face. The mimes made quick works and sewed the body parts onto the bear. Would you look at that? Perfection. I really must, thank you, she said to me. It took me everything in my willpower not to jump on her and bite her face off. She then asked, is there anything I can do to repay you? I would. Like. To go home, I said through gritted teeth. You would like to go home, what? She insisted. My heart was going to explode until I took a breath and muttered please she smiled wickedly. Then nodded her head towards the exit of the carnival. When I walked through the exit, I suddenly felt like I could actually breath. Like I had been drowning in a shallow pool and this was my first breath of real air. As I grabbed my bike to leave I looked back. All the creatures were still looking at me, waving goodbye. In the coming months I was questioned, accused, bullied. You name it. My friend's parents still believe to this day that I had something to do with their deaths. At the time explaining it seemed stupid, still does. You don't have to believe me. It's just I needed to get it out of me before it's too late. You see, I thought survivor's guilt was the easy part to get over. I thought maybe one day I'd be able to move on. Live my life and be normal. But I can't. I have a constant battle in my mind. Thinking of how gruesomely my pals had died. No one in town talks to me. I'm an outcast. I have no money to leave. And. It doesn't help that the new candy shop opening in town is named Mr. Hofsetter's Candy Wonderland. So. I figure the best way to end survivor's guilt, is to not survive. I'm so sorry.